On the 1st of August 2007, the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge, one of the busiest bridges in Minneapolis, collapsed. The bridge had been in use for 40 years, and during this time regular inspections had frequently raised concerns about its structural integrity. The collapse would, however, eventually be traced to a design flaw that none of these inspections had ever noted, and which had been in place for decades before the failure of the bridge. In the second half of the 20th century, a highway construction boom was sweeping across America. Minnesota was no exception. Throughout the 1950s, 1960s and 1970s, huge amounts of manpower and funding were poured into building the Twin Cities freeway system between Minneapolis and St. Paul. The I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge, officially known as Bridge 9340, was a key component in this project. In the early 1960s, the civil engineering company Sverdrup and Parcel were tasked with designing the bridge, and after three years of construction, the crossing was open to traffic in 1967. The I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge served a crucial role as one of three main routes into downtown Minneapolis, a city with one of the highest population densities in the Midwest. By the mid-2000s, the bridge was Minnesota's third busiest, carrying an estimated 140,000 vehicles per day. However, the bridge was not without its issues. Decades of annual inspection at both a state and federal level noted a range of structural problems, including rusting, warped and corroded metal plates. As early as 1991, the Minnesota Department of Transportation labelled the bridge as structurally deficient, but despite this, the bridge remained open to the public. The funding needed to completely renovate the bridge wasn't readily available, and though deficient, any defects were described as being within tolerable limits for the bridge to be left in place as it was. Interestingly, the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge was not unique in its rating as structurally deficient. In 2007, in fact, it was just one of 72,500 American bridges to be categorised as such. Its 2006 inspection report concluded that eventual replacement of the entire structure would be preferable. But this expensive option was deferred in favour of regular maintenance and inspections. On the evening of August 1st, 2007, the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge was filled with rush hour traffic that had come to a near standstill. At the time, the bridge was undergoing general maintenance that had left four of its eight lanes closed and over 260,000 kilograms, or 260 tonnes, of construction materials resting on the bridge itself. Shortly after 6pm, drivers heard a loud snap echo from one of the bridge's beams. This was followed by a louder crash and considerable trembling and shaking throughout the structure. Seconds later, a 300 metre or 1,000 foot section of the bridge's deck collapsed. The southern sections of the bridge fell straight down, landing either in the Mississippi River or on its banks. Meanwhile, the northern end went crashing down into a rail yard, crushing three unoccupied freight cars. The impact of the fall was so great, it broke the deck into multiple large pieces of steel and concrete. 111 vehicles were caught in this collapse, with 17 of them falling into the waters of the Mississippi River. Others were left balancing precariously on the remaining pieces of the bridge, or ended up lodged in the river's muddy banks. The emergency response was rapid and massive in scale. Immediately after the collapse, calls came in to the Minnesota State Patrol dispatch through the 911 system. By 6.07pm, dispatchers had made the first call to coordinate a response, and at 6.08pm, all available emergency staff were directed to head for the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge. The highest priority tasks were rescuing people from the water and from their vehicles, extinguishing vehicles that were on fire, conducting triage, and providing transport to nearby hospitals. Civilians were some of the first to take part in the rescue effort. 
Approximately 100 ordinary people participated, including pedestrians who happened to be near the bridge, students and staff from the nearby University of Minnesota East Bank campus, and construction workers who had been working on the bridge. A group of medical personnel who had been completing a training exercise in a nearby Red Cross building were also among the first on scene. Emergency workers from near and far poured into the area to support the rescue effort. One coordinator noted that, We didn't view it as a Minneapolis incident. It was a city, county, and state incident. Watercraft from more than a dozen different public safety agencies arrived within an hour of the collapse, and did everything they could to rescue those who had been caught up in the disaster. However, by 7.27pm it was concluded that everyone who could be saved had been saved, and the difficult decision was made to shift the response from a rescue to a recovery operation. In total, this recovery effort took more than three weeks. The FBI Underwater Search and Evidence Response Team and the US Naval Sea Systems Command Mobile Diving and Salvage Teams both lent resources and expertise to the effort. Through their dedicated and painstaking work, victims of the disaster were removed from the scene one by one, until, on August 20th, 19 days after the collapse, the last victim was finally recovered. His name was Gregory Jolstadt, known as Jolly to his friends and family. He was a member of the construction crew that had been undertaking general maintenance on the bridge when it fell that summer's afternoon. In total, 190 people were on or near the bridge when it collapsed. 145 people were injured, and sadly, 13 people lost their lives. In the aftermath of the collapse, one question was on everyone's mind. How could such a catastrophic failure occur on a bridge that was so frequently used and so often inspected? Within 24 hours of the accident, investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board were sent to the site to try and find an answer to this question. This investigation included looking into the potential impacts of the weather, traffic, and even the solvents which were used to melt ice in the winter. The corrosion and rusting which had earned the bridge a rating of structurally deficient were at first assumed to be contributing factors, but it eventually emerged that these issues had not significantly contributed to the collapse. Instead, it was determined that an error in design made during the bridge's original construction was to blame. Moreover, this floor had gone unnoticed for more than 40 years, through repeated and thorough inspections that had time and again identified multiple other issues with the bridge. The failure had occurred because of a flaw in a gusset plate used to support the truss of the bridge. This plate was found to be only half as thick as it should have been, a weakness exacerbated by the fact that the load the bridge carried had increased over time as new road surfaces were added. The massive amount of construction equipment left on the bridge during maintenance works had also contributed to the eventual failure of the plate. Inspections had repeatedly caught other issues with the bridge, but it had at no point been standard practice to check for design flaws like this during regular inspections. Though the floor had been in plain sight for decades, it had gone entirely unnoticed. Understandably, the collapse raised concerns about other bridges, not just in Minnesota, but across the US. As a measure to prevent similar accidents, guidelines have since been issued to ensure that inspections catch problems with gusset plates and with bridge design more broadly. Government officials across the nation were also compelled to increase inspections and direct money towards improved bridge renovation and maintenance. However, to this day, many bridges in the US are still categorized as structurally deficient, with the funds needed to repair them simply not available. Efforts to replace the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge were fast-tracked, as it was an essential piece of infrastructure for those living in Minnesota. Within three days of the collapse, Congress had authorized around $250 million to rebuild it. The replacement bridge opened on the 18th of September 2008, just over one year after the collapse. Even though a new bridge has now been constructed, allowing day-to-day -day life in the city to return to normal, 
the failure of the original bridge has not been forgotten. On the 1st of August 2011, the four-year anniversary of the collapse, the 35 West Bridge Remembrance Garden was opened to the public, to commemorate victims and honour survivors of the disaster. Inside this garden, 13 columns represent the individuals who lost their lives, ensuring that the names and stories of the victims live on.